Here's your wrestling news for March 21st, 2022. And your headlines for today include, WrestleMania won't be main evented by a match for the first time ever. Exact date for Cody Rhodes' return to WWE announced. Bianca Belair pulled from fan signing, replacement confirmed. WWE changed plans for SmackDown last week. What was meant to happen? AEW announces new partnership with Japanese promotion. Gable Stevenson closes door on amateur wrestling career. When will he appear next? Stevenson spoils WrestleMania 38 plans in deleted tweet. Indie promotion pokes fun at release WWE superstar following controversial departure from the company. Update on Bret Hart amid rumors of joining AEW. Former WWE superstar makes killing in the first few hours of launching OnlyFans account and more. We are kicking off today with WrestleMania 38 as for the third year in a row, the show will be a two-night event with two main events scheduled to take place. For countless wrestlers, their dream is to one day main event WrestleMania, but this year will reportedly see a groundbreaking move by WWE. According to Reddit insider Kermit125, who has proven to be accurate in the past, WWE is planning for the main event of WrestleMania Saturday to not be a match, but instead be the confrontation between Kevin Owens and Stone Cold Steve Austin. For weeks, Owens has been insulting the Lone Star State, and whilst it was initially reported that the two would have a match, it's since been clarified that Austin's appearance on the KO show will lead to a quote, fight sequence. If this happens, it'll be the first time ever that a WrestleMania won't end with a match in a truly history-making moment for the company. Austin is no stranger to headlining WrestleManias, as he closed out the show in 1998, 1999, and 2001, and it appears he'll have one last Mania main event in his home state. Owens and Austin closing out night one of WrestleMania isn't the only scoop from Kermit125, who also revealed when Cody Rhodes will make his return to WWE. Last week, it was reported that Rhodes has signed a new multi-year deal with the company after a month of speculation and rumors about his status. In his report, Kermit noted that not only will Rhodes face Seth Rollins as previously rumored, but that their match will be part of the Sunday show on April 3rd. Rollins is still without an opponent for WrestleMania, and with this report, it's all but assured that the former Universal Champion will have a presence next Sunday. Kermit adds that the Raw Women's Championship match between Becky Lynch and Bianca Belair will not just be on Saturday as previously confirmed by WWE, but that it will be the first match of WrestleMania 38. WWE wants to kick off WrestleMania in a big way, and the Raw Women's title match will certainly do so, as the card for this year's two-night show is coming together. Belair vs. Lynch is expected to kick off WrestleMania 38, but WWE is doing all they can to make out that the match may not go ahead, even reporting that Belair was injured by Lynch on last week's Raw. In all likelihood, this injury isn't legitimate, and WWE are just trying to add more to their collision next weekend, and the company is doing all they can to make it seem real. Ahead of an online meet-and-greet planned for today, WWE announced that Belair has been pulled from her appearance and has been replaced by The Miz. In their initial report, WWE reported that Belair had suffered a fractured hyoid bone in her throat as a result of Lynch's attack, and we'll have to see what condition the EST is in ahead of her long-awaited championship rematch with Big Time Bex. Over to SmackDown now, as last Friday's show was the first edition of the blue brand since Big E suffered a broken neck and a huge blow to SmackDown. WWE did make reference to Big E's injury, but had originally planned to do more, as according to Fightful Select, Ridge Holland was originally scheduled to cut an in-ring promo in which he'd address what happened. As it was Holland who delivered the suplex last week that broke Big E's neck, fans would have been interested to hear what he said, but the segment was cut and Holland instead faced Kofi Kingston. That wasn't the only change, as the original schedule called for Drew McIntyre and the Viking Raiders to face Happy Corbin, Madcap Moss, and Jinder Mahal, but Moss was replaced at the last minute by Shanky. There's no word on why Moss was pulled from the match, but whatever WWE had planned for him didn't play out on TV last Friday. AEW news now, as the company has made some huge waves over the past three years, with perhaps the biggest to date being the purchase of Ring of Honor. Now AEW will be colliding with another promotion as on social media, the All Elite Company announced a new partnership with Japan-based promotion DDT Pro Wrestling. This isn't a purchase like the ROH situation, but the two companies will work in tandem to bring a variety of stars from DDT into the United States and present it to Western audiences. 
In a statement, AEW's Vice President of Talent Relations, Christopher Daniels, congratulated DDT on the recent 25th anniversary and said he's looking forward to the two companies working together. Fans may have heard of DDT before, as it's where Kenny Omega first started making a name for himself in the international pro wrestling world and where he formed the popular Golden Lovers tag team with Kota Ibushi. With ROH under his ownership and this partnership with DDT, Tony Khan's influence over the wrestling world continues to grow, and we'll have to see which companies meet with the AEW president next. Back to WWE as the company is waiting for the imminent arrival of Gable Steveson, who captured his second NCAA championship this past weekend. The Olympic gold medalist has proven himself beyond a doubt on the mat, and now it's time to say goodbye to amateur wrestling. On the ESPN broadcast, Stevenson said he's done and has achieved everything he wanted to do, including a gold medal and the NCAA championship in repeat victories. Stevenson's time as an amateur wrestler is over, but his time as a WWE superstar may be beginning very soon, as on Twitter, Corey Graves invited the Olympian to Raw. Asking Stevenson if he's busy Monday, Stevenson is already a Raw superstar, being drafted in last October's pool, but is yet to appear on the show other than well in the crowd. We'll have to see if Stevenson shows up tonight, but if he does, it'll be just the first of many appearances for the young superstar, who's racked up plenty of accomplishments already before his first professional match. Stevenson may or may not be at tonight's edition of Raw, but it's practically guaranteed that he'll be at WrestleMania 38, according to the man himself. On Twitter, after announcing the end of his amateur career, Stevenson said, I will be at WrestleMania, it's time, but would immediately delete the tweet. The Olympian may be fast, but he's not fast enough this time, as fans were able to screenshot the tweet before he deleted it. Stevenson deleting the tweet is presumably to keep his WrestleMania appearance a secret, but the cat is out of the bag. The only question now is whether he'll appear on the Saturday or Sunday, but whichever day is picked, expect something big for the Olympic gold medalist. Last November, WWE released Nia Jax from her contract in a huge shock to fans who assumed the former Raw Women's Champion would be with the company for life. It's since been claimed that Jax's refusal to be vaccinated was a factor in WWE's decision, as she'd be unable to perform in a lot of places that require talent to be jabbed, but Jax has since refuted these rumors. Jax's comments about the vaccine are well known, and now one promotion is having fun at the expense of the ex-superstar. In the latest event held by indie promotion Women's Wrestling Revolution Plus, Jax's name was announced for the next match before the announcer said that she would have been there if not for the location's strict vaccination policy. The wrestler in the ring, Kathleen Baptista, can be seen laughing in the video, and this joke about Jax's stance also got a laugh from the crowd. After her release from WWE, Jax hinted that her wrestling career is completely over, and while she may never step back in the ring, the wrestling world hasn't forgotten about her or what she believes. Or from AEW now, as earlier this month, FTR parted ways with Tully Blanchard and immediately teased bringing in a different legend as their manager. Mere hours after firing Blanchard, the duo tweeted Bret Hart asking if he's free to work with them, and this could be happening according to recent photos. In a picture shared online, the hitman is said to be in great shape and was much slimmer in the photo with the Calgary Flames. It's no secret that Brett has been dealing with several health issues in recent years, but looks to be doing much better right now. It's no secret that Cash Wheeler and Dax Harwood are huge fans of the Canadian legend, and this past Dynamite saw the Young Bucks make reference to FTR's next manager being the best there is. Whether Brett actually joins AEW remains to be seen, as we're sure WWE and Vince McMahon will fight hard to keep him away from Tony Khan, but whatever happens, it's great that Brett is looking well. And we're ending today with former WWE superstar Tony Storm, who launched her OnlyFans account last Saturday, selling exclusive content to fans. An OnlyFans account would not have been possible in WWE due to the company's strict rule against third-party deals, but this new venture is seriously paying off for Storm. Within her first hour of the account being active, the former NXT UK Women's Champion had raised over $10,000, with accounts paying $19.99 a month for her content. Within her first half a day, that number had risen to $33,000, and Storm's earnings from the site are continuing to skyrocket. Storm wrestled for WWE for several years and was the 2018 Mae Young Classic winner before being called up in 2021 and thrust into a program with SmackDown Women's Champion Charlotte Flair. 
That feud saw the two throw pies at each other before Storm reportedly requested a release in December, but with her OnlyFans proving to be a hit, the New Zealand wrestler won't be forced to accept the first offer from a promotion that comes along. Well guys, that's our news for today. Please share your comments below. Also hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon to receive all notifications. And as always, thanks for watching.